सब के मन में राम बसे है राम बसे है राम बसे
शारदाम प्रणमाम रिवियर्ड इष्ट प्राणा माता जी ब्रदर्स सिस्टर्स एंड डियर चिल्ड्रन ओम नमो नारायण आया दस मॉर्निंग्स रीडिंग इज टेकन फ्रॉम श्री राम कृष्ण द प्रॉफिट ऑफ द न्यू एज बाय रिचर्ड्स किफमन दिस चैप्टर इज एन इंटेंसली कैप्टिवेटिंग डिस्क्रिप्शन of narain's first meetings with shri ramakrishna narain later became the world renowned swami vivekananda who revived hinduism in india and the west a symbolic revelation became clear to master in a richly meaningful vision where shri ramakrishna found himself soaring high on a luminous pathway through subtle worlds ascending to the realm of pure thought from there to the divine heaven of gods and goddesses piercing the luminous barrier between the world of relativity and sphere of the absolute where even the gods could not hope to penetrate seven venerable sages were seated wrapped in silent contemplation of the eternal shri ramakrishna gazed in awe at the radiant sages whose bodies were composed of the light of pure consciousness as he looked on a portion of the surrounding luminosity became detached and resolved itself into the figure of a divine child the child ambled over to one of the seers and clasped him affectionately in his soft arms rousing him from super consciousness as the sage returned to outward awareness the expression of pure delight in his eyes showed that the child was the beloved of his heart and infinitely dear to him I am going down you must come too the child insisted and the sage expressed his mute agreement with a tender look of assent finally the yogi returned to samadhi and as he did so a fragment of his body and mind broke loose descending to earth in a ball of radiance in recounting this experience Shri Ramakrishna concluded with the words No sooner had I seen Narain than I recognized him to be that sage the master himself later confirmed the divine child was none other than Shri Ramakrishna himself Let us turn to Narain's own account of his first meeting with master After I had sung a Brahmo song for him He took me in hand to the northern veranda. To my great surprise, he began to weep with joy. He held me by the hand and addressed me very tenderly, as if I was long familiar to him. He said, "You've come so late. Was that right? My ears are nearly burning off listening to the talk of these worldly people." I thought I would burst not having anyone to tell how I really felt. He went on like that raving and weeping and then suddenly he folded his palms together and began addressing me as if I was some divine being. I know who you are my lord you are Nara the ancient sage the incarnation of Narayana. You have come back to earth to take away the sufferings and sorrows of mankind. I was absolutely dumbfounded. I said to myself, what kind of a man is this? He must be raving mad. How can he talk to me like this? A nobody, the son of Vishwanath Datta. But I didn't answer him. and i let this wonderful madman go on talking as he chose then he took my hand and said promise me you'll come back here soon alone i couldn't refuse his request 
It was made so earnestly, so I had to say, I will. After this perplexing encounter, Narain returned with Sri Ramakrishna to the room where several other devotees sat. And immediately the master launched into one of his inspired monologues. God can be seen and spoken to just as surely as I am seeing you and speaking to you. If anyone really wants to see God, and if he calls upon him, God will reveal himself. That's for certain. Simple words spoken in the unsophisticated idiom of peasant Bengal. But how wonderfully sincere and affecting. Sri Ramakrishna spoke from the heart, and Naren felt intuitively that here, at long last, was a man who has actually practiced what he preached. Even physically, the half-naked country priest seemed the very picture of spiritual renunciation. Wiry and alert, with the bright sensitivity of one who has attained the heights of ecstasy, yet serene with the suffused glow of a contemplative who has plumbed the very depths of the ocean of peace. Against his own better judgment, Naren was powerfully moved. But how was it possible to reconcile this lucid and saintly figure now before his eyes with the bizarre scene on the veranda just minutes before. Naren was puzzled, but he thought to himself, yes, he is mad, but how pure and what renunciation. With these observations, Naren took his leave. Given the quirkiness of this experience, Naren must have felt tempted to break his promise to return. But Naren could neither forget nor could he comprehend the master. Sri Ramakrishna was a riddle and a challenge in every possible sense. His devotion challenged Naren's intellectual assumptions. His ecstasies and eccentricities challenged Naren's sense of propriety. His serenity challenged Naren's restlessness. Challenged, Naren had no choice but to return to Dakshineshwar. Little did he know how much more unsettling and deeply challenging his second visit to Sri Ramakrishna would prove. Let us return to Naren's own vivid account. He was in a strange mood. He muttered something to himself, which I couldn't understand, then rose and approached me. I thought we were about to have another crazy scene. Scarcely had that thought passed my mind, than he placed it right foot on my body. Immediately I had a wonderful experience. My eyes were wide open and I saw that everything in the room, including the walls themselves, were whirling rapidly around and receding, and at the same time it seemed to me that my consciousness of self, together with the entire universe, was about to vanish into a vast, all-devouring void. It seemed like death to me. Unable to control myself, I cried out loudly, Ah, what are you doing to me? Don't you know I have parents at home? When the master heard this, he gave a loud laugh. Then touching my chest with his hand, he said, All right, let it stop now. It needn't be all done at once. It will happen in its own good time. To my amazement, this extraordinary vision of mine vanished as suddenly as it had come. Naren struggled as much as he did after the first episode and even wondered if he was hypnotized. But Naren prided himself on his mental strength and doubted that this tremendous experience that the master had communicated with the touch hardly qualified as a hypnotic stupor. Nevertheless, 
Naren was on his guard during his next visit to Dakshineshwar. Convinced that he, if he remained vigilant, such an incident could not happen again. But it did happen again. This time, however, with a different outcome. When Sri Ramakrishna touched him lightly, Naren immediately lost consciousness. Even after he had no recollection of what had taken place during the trance. Speaking about this incident later when with his devotees, Sri Ramakrishna revealed that Naren had cognizant of the larger context of his spiritual destiny. In that state, Master questioned him minutely about his past lives and the nature of his present mission and future fate. This was accorded with Master's intuitions and confirmed what had already been revealed to him in his own vision. That Naren had attained perfection in meditation during a previous incarnation and the realizations of that lifetime, whilst temporarily eclipsed from his consciousness so that he might be free to accomplish a very great task for the good of the world. Sri Ramakrishna also discovered that on the very day Naren learned of his true identity, he would give up his body by an act of will. The master did not reveal any of this to Naren after regaining his consciousness. The latest revelation deepened master's special treatment of the special boy, which remained bewildering and embarrassing to Naren. A few people questioned what master saw in him. The boy's charm had a rough edge and not all were instantly won over by it. Naren was negligent of ordinary social conventions, too willful and supremely self-confident for the taste of some. Naren was argumentative and openly disputed with the master. He condemned the master's view on image worship and dismissed his visions from the standpoint of Western psychology. The elder devotees were deeply offended with the outspoken Naren and regarded him as an arrogant schoolboy with a badly inflated opinion of himself. These views did not bother Naren and less still to Sri Ramakrishna. Let no man judge Naren for none is in, his, in a position to fully understand him, Master cautioned. And as for being offended by Naren's combativeness, the Master delighted in it. Master recognized in Naren's furious and obstinate strength a divine power and an obsessive quest for truth. Master also knew that once Naren's questioning and doubt were thoroughly exhausted, the same power would lead a multitude of weaker souls to God. Jai Shri Ramakrishna, Jai Shri Sharda Devi, Jai Shri Swamiji Maharaj, may the blessings of the Holy Trio always be upon us. Hari Om Tatsat.
sisters, brothers, and loving children, let us sit calmly and concentrate our minds on God. Prayer helps to control the restless mind and gives us inner peace. Sri Ramakrishna says, the easiest way to concentrate the mind during meditation is to look intently at the flame of a lamp or a candle. Through regular practice, the mind becomes controlled and rests in God. Om Shanti 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 Om Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 
राज की जय महामाय की जय स्वामी जी महाराज की जय गंगा मात की जय महावीर स्वामी जी की जय सर्व ऋषि मुनियों की जय पार्वती पत हर हर महा 